Dear friends, the last event that took place uh, in our country uh, raised anxiety and even uh, shaken, uh, even get our ground shaken, yes? And we, we, we see massive shootings almost every week, yes? And last couple of weeks it was uh, how many shootings? Five or something like that, yes. We see new diseases, a lot of murders and criminal activity. And all of this is happening while crazy inflation, yes, is taking place and prices rise. One of the first, uh, one of the first reactions to this is to get away from this place and find someone, some, some, and find peace somewhere, and somewhere serene. But the reality is that we must live with this. And that is why today we gather here to talk about something that gives us strength to live what gives strength to live on and look at the future with the hope. The theme or topic of my sermon today is when being love is enough. If you remember last time, it was almost one, week, one month ago, we touched upon the prodigal son. And the sermon was called when being love is not enough enough. And today we, we, we continue with this story, but we will take a look at it from a different perspective. Uh, you know, I have one of the, very, uh, my favorite Bible verse, one of the, my favorite Bible verse, and I would like to read it with you. And I forgot my clicker, and if somebody will help me, it will be good. Um, first John chapter 3 and verse 1. This is my, I love that verse, yeah. This is my favorite Bible verse. Can we read together? Maybe just first part of that verse. See what kind of love the Father has given to us. That we should be called children of God. And so we are. Amazing, yes? Beautiful, powerful message here we have in this verse. And this per verse perfectly explains the essence of being. We have Father, we have His love, and from this perspective, or in this love, we have the right to be called the children. Amen? Amen? Love of God towards human is the perspective where a person can find himself. You know, it is natural for a person to search for himself and to understand who is he or she? What is she capable of? What, do, uh, what drives behind my motives, my actions? In other words, we ask ourselves, who am I? Yes? Who am I? And for uh, all of us go through a similar process of self-identifications. And psychology tells us that each stage of personal development, everyone go through that process of self-identification. On each stage. And today, as a Christians, we also need to go to, through that, uh, that process of self-identification, of identification, who I am right now. The prodigal son if you remember, went through the process 
of self-identification. He was in, the, in, in that process of searching. Of this process touch his, uh, and this process of um, uh, touch his emotions, touch his values of life, his ambitions and worldview. His search showed that in this world, this is very important, in this world, we have just only one perspective where human can find the true himself or herself. Today I would like to share one story with you about one young man. The story is about a man who knows, who know, uh, whom I know very well. And uh, like every teenager, he tried to make independent decisions. To find a good company, good friends, to have real friends, yes. And he tried to become stronger by asserting himself in society. In all, in all of this, he was in a state of search. He was interesting um, in studying the music, but as soon as he started at church, he was rejected with ridicule. He also realized as a, a man, he is supposed to be strong, yes? And began actively engaged in sport. But then friends began to appear. Girls, attentions, relationships, and he, were, he felt that he, he was, or um, he, um, he was needed. That they were interested in him. But in order to communicate, in, uh, to, to communicate with these friends, it was ne necessary to go into forbidden territory. And when he went there, tempting offers occurred that caused a compromise with the Christian's beliefs and Christian principles. And you know what he decided? He decided to try to be like everyone else. He thought he had found a way to, to answer a question. The question, who am I? And maybe now, this is a time, this is a company, this is a period of my life, or decisions that I made. Good for me. And maybe it would be have gone that way, but God took care of this guy. And you know, his parents also took care of him. They realized the changes that are taking place in his life. In his characters, in character, in his um, behavior, some manner, and they they knew he was growing up. He is in search for himself, and they try to help him. And from one side, he seemed to listen to his parents, but he liked inside of him another reality. Something like magnet, you know, was for him. From one side, from one perspective, he understands that, oh, this is good, I know, this is a Christian beliefs. But from another side, something was more, and he can get more than he expected even. It seemed to him that he had found the path that needed to be followed. Maybe it is not always the right thing, but at least he felt needed. But the continuing in this story was that the parents finally catch their son red-handed. He could not get away and had to confess. It was Embracing painful period. It was hard, but the moment of truth come on. 
My friends, when, if, you, if you had maybe that experience, when you smoke and your parents found that, what is their reaction? What, what's going on? You're a good guy. You're a Christian. What happened with you? Parents heard that they would not want to admit to it. They heard all of his story, his journey. They realized that the son had gone so far in his search and self-realization. But the past was completely opposite to what they had uh, hoped for. After this painful and truthful night, came time for rehabilitation. But nothing has changed in his environment, except probably that his parents stopped trusting him. And he saw a point in making amends. He wanted to prove to his parents that he could earn their trust again. And he tried his best. But still, friends do not leave so quickly. And so, maybe more pro the sadness problems that bad habits are in no hurry pass, uh, in not hurry to part of this person. And from time to time, he flirted with some sins again and again. But inside of this guy, it was, there were a struggle, hard struggle. As he would return home, his parents tried to balance their lack of trust and condemnation with a sincere desire to help. Sincere desire to help. They prayed and talked with him. There was, there, there was a struggle, and it seems that this will go, go on forever. Once he had to put an end to it, and the Lord, the Lord in help with that situation. And it was some special way for this guy. Suddenly, one day, a telegram arrived in which grandma asked them to come over. The father got ready and offered his son to go with him. But it was beginning of May. May, this is a special May, uh, month for, for students, for uh, students, especially high, high, um, high school students, because what you need on May? Graduation. Yeah, graduation on, to be ready for exam, for testing. And he needs that time. But the father insisted, and they sent off. From the first day of their journey, it was clear that the life of young men must change. A change of environment and close communication with father. Together, they went to solve some problems. They went shopping, walked, prayed. It was a special time uh, it was 1999. If you remember that it was special time for our church, it was Pentecostal program at our church, yeah, taking place in all over the world. People prayed, prayed for outpouring of the Holy Spirit and examining their lives. Each member, each member of the church was given little. I don't know, maybe even, li yeah, little book, like this one. It was prayer book. It was little book where the text of special and short prayer were written down. There were also a blank space for prayer needs and personal prayer to the Lord. Personal prayer to the Lord. Son, the son did not have such book. But his father, he did. And the son was terribly interested. 
in what his father wrote there every evening. Because he saw how his father has the time for his special prayer and he wrote something. Every, every night, every evening. And one day, when the father went to the store, he opened this little book. And something he found there. But what he found, it, I will tell you a little bit later. I will stop my story here now. And the story of this guy is not exceptional, yes? This is not something new for us. We heard many, many stories like that. There is a lot of such of that story. Maybe someone here has gone through a similar identification to find yourself. Perhaps someone's held hidden in a, in a book, someone hidden in a uh, collapse with alcohol, uh, someone asserted himself in his own selfishness. Man tries to answer the question, who am I? And the man is constantly searching. Perhaps it was search, it was a search for yourself that brought you to church. Yes? For someone, this is a you are winner. Many people leave the church precisely to this reason. They could not identify themselves with the church because they did not understand the most important things that every person needs to understand. And this is not only a problem of modern men. This lack of understanding led many heroes of the Bible to apostasy and many to repentance. Friends, Jesus Christ once drew a story about young men who did not understand the most important things. Who, who also tried to answer the question, who he is. He, this, is uh, this is a story about a young man who did not understand that finding his, himself does not mean have enough money, a lot of money. Does not mean to have, having many friends, being an authority. It does not mean having fun the way you want. It does not mean dressing up in whatever you want or allowing whatever you want and live for yourself. The truth is that we will never be able to answer the question of who I am, friends. This is a, a useless search. This is only possible in one case. And this is accident, and this accident was described by Jesus Christ. Find yourself, answer, question, answer the question of who I am only. And I would like to highlight this. We can find ourselves only in the love of someone. The love of father for his son, for his son helped him find himself to determine who he is. We can only be identified as a Christians by the love of, of Heavenly Father for us. You know, Bible, this is a book, is full of this love. The whole Bible is based on love. Love for a harlot helped her understand who she is to find herself. The love of God brought Jesus to the cross. And those who accept his love, his sacrifice can boldly say who they are. If you remember the story of that prodigal, uh, parable of prodigal son, it was a story about love. The whole story is permit, uh, permitted with love. Love that does not suppress but makes a human a person. The younger son rejected his father's love and went in search, yeah? As do, as do many people, we try to find. And sometimes we decided, no, I can do this without God. 
I can find myself. Maybe it will be easy even for me. Having traveled the past, he reached a critical point in his life, bring his, him back to life. His fam and goes to his father, hoping to survive, but his father brings him back to life. His father's love resurrects him. But as for the older son, he seemed to know who he was and what he was able. But it turned out he lived in captivity or hatred and rejection. Being close to his father, he was, he was lost. And friends, dear, uh, that story is about us. You know, we are also allegedly close to the Father. But questions that we have, but do we know who we are? Do we know about the love of our Father? Do we believe in it? Do we feel it? Do we understand it? This is a ba basement for my life, inspiration for my life. Perhaps being with Father for someone looks like we lost. Today, the devil offers three kinds of lies that revolve around who we are. And all people, me and you, each one of you living on our earth are subject to these three types of, li of lies. Three types of lies. First, first type of lie, I am what I have. I am what I have. I am what I own. Yes. I have a big house. Pink house. Blue house. With new siding. With new roof. Some bricks. I have my own business. I am what I have. I am a successful man. I have good salary. Good benefits. Retirement funds. Yes. For my, for, I have good education level. That's who I am. And the devil creates a life full of stress for us. So that a person would strive with all his might to rise to another step, to a higher level. If you remember the story from the book of Eschadas, chapter 3, when Pharaoh met with Moses the first time, what is his reaction? He gave new task for Israelites. More bricks. And sometimes we leave one more, one more step, new bricks, new bricks. And devil, he is ready to give something else for you. Remember the story of young man, a rich young man. He had something that uh, gave him certain status, position, and authority. And that is how he identified himself. It's the reason why he came to Jesus and said, yes, I am. I am, and I am what I have. I am what I want, own. This is the first, first type of lie. Second lie is the following, and let's keep rich young men in mind. I am what I do. This is a problem too. I fulfill all commandments. Yes. I knew all doctrines. I read all Ellen G. White, all commentaries, or something. I, I am what I do. That's who I am. I have great influence. All my neighbors see in me something special. Yes. I brought new person into the church. I helped the poor. I define myself as a very righteous and obedient person. That is who I am. And third lie is deception, is the most terrible and which all people fall for. I am what others say about me. And imagine the following picture, following situation. You come to gym. Have you been in gym? 
Yeah, many, many years ago, maybe for some of you. <laughs> yes, like for me, <laughs> it was a long time ago there. But you come to a gym and get on the treadmill. Yes? A person next to you is already running on it, on a treadmill. And you are keep your cool, but with your peripheral side, you always keep and eyes on the person next to you. And this makes you increase in speed. And you see, oh, he has four. I would like to add more. I will do four and a half or five. And this makes you increase in speed. Then, with your peripheral side, you see how this person, what? Increase his speed. And you see, okay, and you feel the tournament and that race come to you. And you need to increase your speed again. But in this race, you want to be a winner. And you add up more speed to yourself. With your peripheral sight, you see that the person next to you is not raising their speed. And this gives you what? Feeling of triumph. Now I am the winner. And yeah, you, you're still running, but some relief came to you, yes? <sighs> but then there is another person comes to you. And unconsciously they are fascinated by your speed. This gives you even more feeling of victory. This example takes place in non-verbal communication, yes? Because nobody said nothing. This illustrates very well how we depend on other person's opinion. Their leaking, their rela uh, reaction, their phrase or, cr or criticism. People sometimes don't even accept truths. It's hard for them to come to church or maybe accept some biblical truths because they are afraid of the public opinion. We depend on someone else's opinion. There are many lies in our life motivation. And, I will, and we ourselves fall into these lies. The devil throws a lot of lies at us and we pack at it. And today, dear friends, I want you to say no to the devil's lie. We are not what we are. We are not what we do. We are not what others says, say about us. Then who we are? The answer to this question is what I want to remember forever. I want you to remember forever. This is the main thing that I want to take away from this sermon. We are those whom God has loved. We are loved. By God. And I would like to read one Bible verse from the book of Romans, chapter A, and verse 37, 38. And it will be our last Bible verse for today. Yes, for sermon, not for today. Okay. Chapter 8, verse 37, 39. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, no power, nor hell, no depth, no, nor anything else in all creation will able to separate us from the love of God. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. You know, my friends, I want to say with I want you to say with me right now, I am the beloved child of God. Say with me, I am beloved child of God. I am the beloved child of God.
You are not just a member of the church, my friends. You are not just a person with a good salary. You are not just elder or maybe Sabbath school teacher, musician. You are not just a person with a good moral foundation. You are not just a person who has college education or something like that. No and no again. We are children of God. We are beloved children of God. Again and again, we are beloved children of God. Amen? The prodigal son realized that he was the beloved son of his father. The apostle Peter realized that he was beloved by God. Paul, apostle Paul, felt that he was a child of God. The harlot felt like a daughter of God. Uh, out of ten lepers, remember? Only one realized that he was a beloved child of God. Remember the story I told you at the beginning. We will, be, we will go back it, uh, to it now. The young man, remember, teenager, young man, he got opportunity to open father's book. Look in this book, into his father's diary. And what do you think he saw there? Page after page, he reads the same prayer over and over again. The prayer went like this. Lord, I love my son so much. Save him. Please save him. Tears rolled down the cheeks of this young man. This, this word turned his life, whole life upside down, changed his attitude towards his father. Father is not enemy. The father loves him. He does not condemn him. He loves. The love of his father changed his life. The understanding that his father loves him, prayer, prayers about him, Every night made change in him and put an end to his empty life search. God is our dear heavenly father who loves us and we are his beloved children. And this story is not a fiction. This story is of my life. The father was my dad and I was that young man. Love of my father helped me change my life and find the right way, right path, helped me understand who I am. Today, God invites us to stop being deceived by, God's devil, uh, by, by the devil. What is the answer for, for who am I for us? You could only answer one thing. I am beloved child of God. That is the perspective that I might see in my life. Amen? Amen? I would like to pray with you. Our Heavenly Father, you are amazing. You changed our lives. You found us. You saved us. You came to this earth because you wanted to show us that you love us. And we pray, forgive us. And give us that understanding of that perspective that we are the beloved children of you. We pray, bless us and be with us. In Jesus' name, our prayer. Amen.